So here you can see the uh, the 80 mm fan has uh, arrived today from China. That's been fitted, and uh, the cable I routed up through and through the side, and I've sealed that with silicon sealant. And if you look over this side here, a bit tricky to see, but uh, I've got the sensor, the temperature sensor, just poking through um, into the uh, the cool section. Um, so that will get the air as it comes back. So the circulation of air in here will come out of the fan, around and back past the sensor inside. This is still loose because I haven't finally fixed it. I'm still just uh, adjusting things on the other side. Now just before I close it up I'm going to show you what I have modified the, uh, the cooling circuit. So I've installed a new T-piece here um, which gives me a a filling tube here which I can fill from and then seal off. So uh, you can see the, the cooling block here and the circuit goes up through the T-piece, through the pump and through the wall into the internal uh, cooling radiator, back from the cooling radiator and I'll be connecting that back onto the, um, uh, the cooling block here. OK, now I'm going to show you how to fill it up. So I've got my filling tube here with a funnel attached. What I've used here is a bit of old tubing from a, um, a, a pump, um, a, a sort of camping pump, which has got a sort of nozzle on the end. So uh, there we go, it's bubbling, which is a good sign, letting some air in, some air out, I mean. Okay, still more bubbles coming out. One important design factor to mention at this stage is that when I installed the radiator on the inside and uh, the, the cooling block on the outside, I put the, um, the inlet and outlet tubes at the top so that uh, it would assist uh, um, air to get out. Um, but even so, I'll probably need to spin the pump a little bit before it uh, gets all the air out. But it does at the moment look as though it's uh, filled up as much as it can at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is just um, fold over the tube just as a temporary seal. Just bind a bit of tape around it. And uh, then I'm going to start the thing up to uh, um, flush any more air out. So now with the water full, I'm going to um, connect the power supply. And as I do that, the, um, the pump starts. A um, few air bubbles um, drift up towards the top, but it looks like I've been successful in getting the uh, air bubbles out. Um, and I can see on here, um, I'm not sure how well the camera will pick this up because of the 30 frames per second, but. Uh, the temperature inside reads 38.8. Um, I think today is the hottest day of the year so far in the UK, so it's a great test for it. 38.8, I can see down here my battery voltage is 12.3 volts. So I'm just going to run this, I'll just feel the temperature of the heat sink outside. And uh, what I'm looking for is the internal temperature to start reducing. Um, and it's just gone up to 39, which is not a great sign. Of course, what this could mean is I've got the, um, the Peltier connected back to front, so I might be cooling the outside and uh, increasing the temperature inside. If that's the case, I simply need to uh, turn the uh, connections around on the, uh, the Peltier device. Either way, it shouldn't do any harm. Yeah, OK, so temperature's going up to 39. Just flicked on 39.1 inside now. And I'm beginning to wonder if the, uh, if the heatsink is the wrong way round. 
if the Peltier device is uh, corrected, connected the wrong way round. So now I reverse the polarity of the uh, Peltier and uh, it's starting to cool on the inside. And uh, yeah, the fan's keeping the heatsink outside um, to a reasonable temperature. So at the moment I can see 33.3 .3 degrees inside and uh, I really need to uh, set up the control module so I'll just go look up how to do that. I'm now going to show you how to program this thermostat. So the temperature at the moment reads 31.9. If I press the button on the left briefly it shows me the target temperature which is set to 5 degrees. Now I can adjust that down or up. I'll leave it on 5 degrees and then it just goes back after a few seconds back to the, the actual temperature on the sensor inside. Now if I hold this button 1 down for 5 seconds it changes into the programming mode and we see P0. Um, P0 is how you change whether you want it set Oops, on P0, press that button again and you see the setting for P0 and it's set to cold. You could also set it to hot, okay, but we want it on cold so that when the sensor's too hot it turns the cooling on. Okay, that's P0. If I'm showing P0 and I press the button again, it goes up to P1. Now, P1, we see what the setting here is. That's 2. Now, this is um, the difference between when it turns off and on. So, um, at the moment, it, it's all, um, with it set on 2, it will um, cool, cool the, um, the inside down until it gets to 5 degrees and then it will turn off and then it will warm up again gradually on the inside and it's only when it gets 2 degrees above 5, i.e. 7 degrees, then it will turn on again. Okay, 2 is a, a fairly standard setting. The reason is because if you had it at a small amount like 0.5, this thing would be forever cycling on and off. So it just reduces the cycles. So that's how I've got it set up, and that's a quick guide to setting it up. Um, so here it's been going for uh, probably about two and a half hours, and uh, unfortunately the result is that it doesn't seem to be working. Um, the temperature inside is now 27.7 degrees, and uh, the temperature outside is about 40 degrees. Um, so there's a bit of difference, but it's not giving the uh, the highly efficient cooling that I desired. So uh, I think I'm going to have to rethink the uh, the arrangement here. I think what I've got to do is put the uh, the cold surface of the Peltier right inside, and uh, probably use the um, um, the piping in the cooling mechanism to uh, to drag the heat outside. So it needs a bit of a rebuild, reversing some of these uh, items. Anyway, end of the experiment for the moment.